Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our virtual physics class. Once again, I've got to apologize to you for missing class uh, today. I <clears throat> didn't have any control over it. Uh, the uh, electronic course of my car has given up the ghost, and I have to get it reprogrammed entirely. Hoping to take care of that today. I hope that works out well. Fingers crossed. Okay, what we're going to talk about <clears throat> is, is where we're going to go, and then I'm going to cover a, a little bit of some slides. I had this done earlier on a different uh, system. I discovered it was too long for, for my YouTube account, so it wouldn't uh, upload. So this will be a little bit shorter. I'll probably have two today, but here's what we're going to do. You should be seeing the home screen. That's my version of it. It's a little bit uh, uh, different from yours or current position. We've got... <clears throat> you've got... Uh, uh, we're upcoming on exam three. We'll be doing that this coming week, uh, and that's basically on everything up through chapter 30. Um, and we talked about that some on Tuesday. This is coming out of position. This is the optics lab here, but we're going to work on in preparation for doing the speed of light lab. Uh, and we're going to, and I'm going to pass out, um, by means of email, by, by means of Canvas. Today, there are two labs I'd like you all to work on. They can both be done at home. There's not a problem with, with that, and that, that will get you ready for uh, uh, some lab work on Tuesday. And then the following Tuesday, we will we'll start working on the Speed of Light Lab, and that will be our final lab for the year, I expect. Uh, I've got some homework that I uh, I'm uploading today for you. These are our homework from the textbook. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I misspoke. What I'm going to cover first, before I give you a, a assigned homework, uh, I told you that I was going to have give you chapter 31 and 33 notes that my intention was to cover in the, in the class today. So uh, it's because I got fouled up yesterday with the car. I did get the chapter 31 notes done. Uh, chapter 33 notes are not done either. I will upload those later on today or tonight, probably. So you'll, you should have them uh, by, by, let's just say, worst case over the weekend to review. And we can discuss that some on Tuesday as well. And of course, since you, you, you're away from me, if you want to send me an email or check in with me, that would be just fine. Uh, I've got no issue with that at all. Uh, so we'll we will get everything here ready. So that's what we're that's my plan, uh, and I want to go over some material with you this morning that uh, I was going to go over in class. Okay, so we're we're talking now about. Uh, uh, let me see if I want to fix this. Hold on, I think I'm gonna get rid of my picture. I think I did it. There's that. This. Yeah, no, we're all okay. Um, there'll be a little portion of you can see this. You can see this uh, uh, the slides in your in your Canvas file. We're talking about the, the nature and propagation of light. At this point, we're talking. This is about all we're going to cover with this. Uh, I'll have a little bit of stuff in December just to uh, use the words and sentences about the, about the particle nature of light. But this is the wave nature of light, which is just how we mostly see it. It's it's uh, it's waves and propagation and speed of light, all those things. So let's. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. I don't have time to do that, um, because our reason I'm rushing here, I don't. I've only got uh, about 12 minutes left on this before it goes away, and I, if I go longer, YouTube will upload it. So I'm not going to worry about this. Okay, anyway. We talk about uh, waves and uh, waves, wave fronts, and that's what each one of these concentric circles is, or concentric spheres. These are expanding wave fronts coming out from a point source of either light or sound. It'll make you difference which one. Electromagnetic waves are, are are special because they don't require a medium in which to, to pass. They can uh, uh, pass through a vacuum, and we discussed that some in class. But it's kind of a cool story too about that. But it. Uh, um, I'll discuss that in class again. But what we uh, what we have here is uh, when we have rays coming out from a source, most of the time on a lot of things that we'll do, I'm going to consider those parallel rays because they're a very distant source. So we're going to discuss we're going to discuss these being parallel. 
Come on. Now this is an interesting, I like this illustration a little bit, but it's kind of busy. But this just talks about how, uh, how we see light uh, affects our perception of what we see. Now, this individual out here in the street, uh, her hat's blown off evidently, but what she's looking at is a reflected image of the of the uh, 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 hat in the window. And if it's just a matter of just a perception, that's where she could think it was. Now, obviously, if she's out there with it, she knows that's a reflection, but that's where it appears. That's the, that's the image that she's looking at when we're, when we're seeing this picture. The other individuals that are inside this little coffee shop are looking outside and they're seeing the actual hat blow away. They have no knowledge at all of this reflected image uh, because they're, they're not in a position to see it. And this is just a matter of, uh, this is how light can change our perception of, uh, of what's going on. So when light strikes a smooth surface, and I'm going to, because of interest of time, I'm going to cut down here to the chase a little bit. Here, this is a good picture. Now, do I want to move? Can I move it? Yes, I can. I'm going to move it over here. Okay, so here we have light that are com coming in here from this upper left, striking this surface to reflect off this surface and to go reflecting off to the right. This is called a specular reflection or a mirrored reflection. One of the things that we go over a lot in the book uh, and we will talk about in terms of our problems. Remember, we, we had a concept a few uh, weeks ago. We talked about something called a normal line. A normal line is perpendicular to the surface right here. So if you have a, an angle, a, a light coming in at a certain angle, it'll come in. You, if you measure that angle with respect to this normal line, that I can't draw anymore, then you'll... Uh, You'll get, you'll discover that's the angle of incidence. When the, when the light reflects, goes off in this, in this manner, it reflects off to the right again with respect to the angle of incidence. Those, pardon me, the normal line, those two angles are, uh, are identical. They're the same angle. And that's always true, no matter what happens. Now you say, well, what about down here? Well, down here we have a, a much more uh, rough surface. So we, we get a more diff diffuse reflection. So all these locally, these points here where individual rays might strike the surface, you get, a, you get a, a, a local reflection right there, but that would cause the light to scatter. This is why if you look at your reflection in, oh, if you think, I was thinking about, we don't see much of them anymore, but old chrome bumpers that were polished chrome, but they weren't, they were just shiny. They weren't mirrored surface. The mirrored surface will give you a high quality image. So, um, if you look at your reflection in just a piece of shiny metal, you can see an image, but at the same time it's a bit fuzzy, a bit out of focus. It's not until you get an actually very smooth surface here that you'll, that you'll see a high quality image. So we, and then we have so and oh, and oh by the way, just want to make sure you you're aware of this. We have the angle of incident here equals the angle of reflection. That's true for all materials. All materials doesn't make any difference. If they reflect, they, they obey this law. If they refract, we're still doing something relative to the, the 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 normal line. Here's the normal line here. Here is the angle of incidence. Here is the angle of reflection. Now this is interesting here, this other angle here, this, this theta b, this is the angle of refraction. If the material here is more dense or light, making light travel slower in it than it might in, that, in material a, then the ray will be bent toward the normal line. If the inverse is true, if this is light, light traveling in this direction, uh, and with, with, as light travels in, 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 in this direction, and uh, we, we get up here to, uh, we go through this, when we go, th go through that, we, we still refract, but now we refract away from the normal line. Come on, there we go. This is all due to the, the index of refraction in a material, which is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, uh, divided by the velocity uh, uh, in the material we're talking about. Uh, and so the lowest this number can ever be is just one. 
anything involving a, a, a refractive problem is, is a base Snell's law, and here's the definition of the angles here. I will have some problems and some examples I'll put up later on today that you can review these. And I hope those help you. This is a pretty. This is how all lenses and mirrors work. So it's kind of neat to go through it like this. And now uh, these are conditions for different cases of reflection and refraction. I'm not going to go through them in this little video in detail, just in the interest of time, because I'm, I'm running out of time that I can spend here. To, but you can review those. You have all those slides. And there's a discussion here, and we've all seen this, where if you if you look at something in a shallow uh, pool of water, it will look less deep than it actually is, and that's because of the problems with re refraction. We can go over this. This is one reason you got to be very cautious around water to make sure you don't step in something that's actually way, way too deep. These are some various uh, indices of refraction for different materials, and we're going to go over that a lot more later on. And then this is how the uh, the wavelength uh, aspects of, of light is, is affected by the refractive index, or I guess vice versa, I should say that. Okay, uh, there's a concept here called total, total internal reflection, which is fundamental to how fiber optics work. I'm going to show you the picture of the fiber optics. This is the how we define the critical angle in a fiber optic or any kind of a, a, a internal reflection device. And this is what I was kind of going for. This is what we always think about. This is why light never escapes from that because the index of refraction and, and the, the geometry of the situation um, makes us uh, makes this light susceptible to. to uh, internal reflection. That's how lights, light always travels in a straight line. This will allow it to be, to be, be, be curved. I'm getting close on time here. i got about three minutes left. I don't want to go over because I don't want to have it lose my, my uh, lecture again. I will be putting up another lecture or another just video of this as well as problems uh, later on today and this evening and I'll be always available to answer your questions. If you email me or text me that would be great because we can, we can talk as soon as you like. Have a good day and again I apologize for missing the class. We will uh, we'll pick up on Tuesday I hope, knock on wood, and uh, everybody have a good weekend and do your work.